What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another interview edition of Learn Crypto. My name is Nick Hellman, and today I have with me Steve Carpone, the CMO of Voyager, a new crypto asset broker promising the crypto trading app you deserve. How are you doing today, Steve? I'm doing well, Nick. Happy to be here. Perfect. You know, I guess really to start, if you just want to give a brief background on yourself and some of the team members that really are driving the, the, the deliverance of this product, because I know it's uh, some people from Uber and others. So maybe if you want to touch a background on that, and then we'll dive right into what is Voyager and maybe why people should start uh, trading crypto assets over there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, uh, we have a really uh, great kind of unique and diverse team. Um, I may have... Uh, some people, my background is fun, but in comparison to others on the team, it, it, it may be boring. My, my background's always been in working in emerging technology, uh, starting early in my career in search engine marketing, you know, before Google was a company they made movies about. Uh, then worked into mobile and uh, gaming for quite a while. I worked uh, on the Xbox team for quite a while. Uh, always, always working on a new technology. If, if it's not new, I get pretty bored with it. And then when it becomes status quo, I move on to the next one. So. I like to say I'll, I'll be working on space travel within, within a couple of years. <laughs> you know, once this crypto thing becomes totally, just totally normal. Um, so, um, yeah, the, the founders of our business, I was, you know, I was really lucky to be around really when the business was being put together um, uh, just uh, a little over a year and a half ago. Uh, this, is, this has really been a build and launch. Uh, 2018 was really a build and launch year for us. Uh, as we, the company really came together in 2017. Um, you know, it all starts with, with Steve, Steve Ehrlich, our CEO, uh, Steve's background and experience in capital markets and brokerage is, um, you know, is really uncomparable. He, 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 he knows how, how the systems work, how the infrastructure is laid out. He ran the professional trading unit at E-Trade, uh, and then later on actually took that unit, brought, brought it, uh, bought it out and, uh, formed it into Lightspeed Financial, which is a dedicated day trading brokerage. Uh, largely around equities um, and ran that for quite a while and it's been involved in quite a few fintech companies so uh, you know eTrade being a pioneer in online brokerage you know, having Steve's experience kind of seeing that wave and then into today and how the brokerage world works um, how orders are executed who the players are has really helped us not only build something great but of course find some really great partners uh, uh, also notably you know one of our founding team members a uh, really, really, really crucial team member in the, the origination of the business and still is uh, an important advisor is, is Oscar Salazar. Oscar uh, yep, was the co-founding CTO of a little app called Uber. Uh, and, uh, you know, he really, uh, aside from contributing from an engineering culture standpoint, and Oscar has just actually been very interested in the crypto space for a while and really passionate about it, um, you know, also just kind of brings that, uh, experience around bringing a disruptive technology into market. You know, mm -hmm. Uber isn't too different than some crypto companies and having to go through uh, sort of, you know, unknown regulatory frameworks and bring something entirely new. Uh, and uh, uh, other folks on our board and founders include Philip Aton, who also was an early investor in, in Uber and founded some, founded some other, uh, uh, some pretty big technology companies. Uh, Gaspar de Jersey and Serge uh, Kriker, who's uh, founded Trade It, a, a middleware company that connects uh, websites and businesses to brokers. So lots of disruptive tech experience, yeah. brokerage experience, and it is, uh, it's really a delight to kind of to have them around as resources and guiding the company. And then within our team from engineering, my team across marketing and strategy, our product team, just really, really deep bench of fintech experience, capital markets, and then just high quality engineering. Yeah, when I was looking at your team, I was quite impressed with the team you guys have, as well as the group of advisors that I'm sure pull their weight as well. So let's dive right into this. What is Voyager and who is really your target market for Voyager? Why if my audience who's obviously interested in cryptocurrencies and investments and traditional investments as well, you know, why should they use Voyager for their crypto assets? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, we do a bunch of things for both retail and institutional partners. I think it's easier to start in talking about a retail business, uh, which we started earlier and is now live. Uh, so we have a live product right now that's an iOS application that is a crypto trading application. Um, it sits on a sort of bigger infrastructure of technology. And I, at the end of the day, I kind of like to refer to our business as an infrastructure business and a technology business. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. 
Uh, but specifically, I, you know, we got into this at first really focused on retail and making crypto trading easier, more accessible, uh, and, and kind of honoring the evolution of capital markets and, and online brokerage. One of the things we, we focused very heavily on earlier and continue, and it, and it helps us offer something really differentiated, is the concept of what they call best execution in, uh, in equities. And that's a broker or, you know, brokerage's responsibility um, a, a regulated responsibility to go out and seek, uh, seek the best price for you, execute your trade uh, at, uh, at good speed and fast speed, and also put together a market for you. Um, so we use uh, some technology that we've invested a lot in our back end called smart order routing technology. And that, what that does is, um, I always refer to this in some interviews, I've mentioned it of the, the 10 tab problem. I, I used to be a much more active crypto trader and build Building Voyager, I'm, I'm a little less active because we're bringing this product to market. But as you know, and I'm sure many of your viewers know, if you want to trade a variety of different crypto assets and certainly you want to find a way to access them with fiat currency, you have to, you know, open up quite a few different exchange accounts or, you know, open up a bunch of tabs, see what's available when, what may be trading at a better rate. And this smart order routing kind of best execution technology that I referred to, uh, we try and do a lot of that legwork for you. So... Our back end is, is connected to a variety of exchanges, uh, consolidates that into an order book of pricing to help find uh, a better price on trades. Uh, so we help optimize those tabs for the trader um, and help offer uh, uh, more assets with uh, currently we're in the US with US dollars. So we may execute uh, with a different crypto on your behalf to help you access that with US dollars. So um, we're, you know, we're able to offer price improvement and really competitive pricing on trades and also really, really fast order execution orders don't sit on the books for very long because we're bringing a, a big market together. You know, uh, Binance is a customer of ours, an exchange we work with, and they're, you know, the largest, but they still only represent a small fraction of the, all of the liquidity and the market in the crypto space. So we really like to say we're putting together the widest and largest crypto market. Um, and we do all that. And then on top of it, we, we offer a free commission platform. So we don't charge any fees for trades. Uh, we support 18 coins, um, which is pretty, pretty competitive. And uh, obviously some other things, integrate some news. And, and on top of that, I think we do it in a, with, a, with a pretty sleek, uh, sleek platform. That's awesome. That is a really good overview. You kind of went over some of the questions I had, but we'll dig deeper on some of these things. So the first thing I heard was, hey, we're striving to be comparable to a brokerage platform. And when a lot of people hear about that, they're like, oh man, broker, you know, they think Edward Jones or whatever, we're going to have these enormous amount of fees. They're going to invest what, what they want to invest in, not what I want to invest in. But you also said that you guys are a no fee pl platform, but I know Voyager is a for-profit company. So how do you guys really make that work while still promising the best execution price for these cryptocurrencies that I want to trade? Yeah. Yeah. It's a great question. We, we get it all the time. We, uh, we public, you know, we explain it on our website and you're, you're absolutely right. In fact, uh, just a few weeks ago, we went public as a company. I'm you know, happy to talk more about that, but became a publicly listed company on the Toronto Venture Exchange. So we certainly have an obligation to uh, show value for our shareholders, and uh, we aim uh, to, to grow a very profitable company, certainly. Uh, at the same rate, we don't, we don't think we need to offer hidden fees or uh, uh, really confusing pricing models. We think we can still deliver really great value. And, and we do that really with the technology that I just described. Um, the, as I suggested, the crypto market is extremely fragmented. The, you know, not to get too detailed, but the order books of how much someone is willing to bid uh, or the ask, sort of the buy and sell side of the crypto market can look pretty different. Um, you know, you've seen arbitrage players in this, and but it can look pretty different from exchange to exchange. Um, so we're able to quote a really competitive price that we find is competitive against, you know, all the major crypto pricing tools out there, uh, as well as uh, our competitor trading platforms that you agree upon. And then if we go out there and our router enables us to execute that order with price improvement, meaning get that crypto for you at a, at a better price than we even promised it to you, which like I said, is a pretty competitive price in the first place. Uh, we take what's called a spread. We take a piece of that price improvement. Mm -hmm. And in our beta testing, we were seeing that right around 90% of orders. And um, it's really hard to optimize that in 10 tabs as a person. But when you invest in the backend technology that we have, um, that enables us to, you know, I, 
I'm a marketer. I run our marketing and strategy, and it's really fun to be able to say that that we make money when when you save money. Yep, that is pretty cool. You know, I've been looking into that. I, I want to do further, you know, details. Kind of look at Voyager, sign up for a purchase, and see what I can find on exchanges and see how it compares. But I, I'll take your word on that for sure. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, you already talked about the method that you guys are doing this, uh, this tool that you have here. Not really an API, but kind of, you know, are you grabbing your crypto pricing from a set amount of exchanges or do you have a list of exchanges that you're using for these prices or how does that work? Could you name a few of those by chance? Uh, yeah, we don't disclose all of the exchanges that we work with. And frankly, the ones that the ones that we're connected to and may be seeking execution on could change at any given time. So okay. we're very hesitant to say what exchange we're working with and if they're validating that we're putting orders there at any given time because our, our, our router is pretty dynamic. Um, we work with many of the top exchanges. Okay. Well, that's um, fine. You can leave uh, it at that if you want. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, sorry, you had a follow-up question to that around uh, in addition to what exchanges we're, we're executing at. Was there something else you were looking yeah, at? Yeah, if there's any other tools or if it's pretty much just using like trading APIs that are generated from these exchanges. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Around pricing, yeah. Yeah, so um, the pricing that, that we bring in, uh, like I said, we bring together a consolidated order book. We do have feeds from other pricing providers. Uh, Crypto Compare is a, leading, is a leading provider out there. And we do bring in the pricing feeds. We think, you know, as you know, many of your viewers, I'm sure, are looking at the common crypto apps and coin market cap and all these places. And these are kind of the core lens that folks are looking at pricing at. So we think it's really important. We, we do ingest that, that pricing in. Uh, so it's a combination of taking in kind of the most visible pricing, uh, but also then what we're seeing on on the execution side. And there's a balance there of being able to quote something that's competitive. And like I said, we often do and uh, take my word for it. Absolutely. Go go do trades. Uh, but also there's been a lot of great uh, the uh, editor of uh, Investopedia wrote a really great article on us and her, her experience, uh, Teresa Carey, with price improvement. Um, so we're able to kind of balance that uh, that kind of core feed of knowing how to be competitive with uh, how we're able to actually execute in that consolidated order book that we call it. Perfect. And you did mention that currently you guys have 18 cryptos. I'm looking at some now. Uh, primarily, it looks like it's really the top by market capitalization. But then you get a couple outliers out there. Like I saw that you guys uh, have ICX on here, QDOM, uh, VET, um, as well as others. You know, is there really a rhyme or reason behind these coin listings? Is there a way for coin projects to reach out to you for potential listing opportunities? And then are you guys also, I'm assuming since you're in the United States, you're also looking at the regulatory side with some of these crypto projects as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, we've been uh, really excited about, frankly, even while we were in beta and earlier, uh, the communities and the different coin communities that have reached out to us and Sometimes we have to educate on uh, 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 different communities on our model. Uh, uh, folks ask for a listing on Voyager when, as I explained, you know, being on Voyager, really what we look for is for you to be supported on exchanges. So one of the biggest, one of the biggest kind of criteria to be supported on Voyager, and certainly not the only one, is that we feel the market is there, that we're able to deliver our promise to customers, that we can aggregate, aggregate liquidity in the right way. Um, so that's certainly a big consideration because uh, we want to be able to deliver that promise. We certainly take into account regulatory considerations, absolutely. Uh, that, that's something we feel we're very responsible to do. Uh, we definitely have um, uh, kind of a, a, a next list of different coins that we're looking to bring on. Uh, these were our beta coins, ones we felt really great supporting and what we launched with. There will definitely be more in the future. Uh, in terms of communities reaching out to us, uh, there's some information available on our website. They can really just reach out to contact and they'll get routed to the right team. And we're actively working on a, a, a richer application process for them. That's awesome. Well, it's exciting to see what will be on there. And really, as you guys already probably know, that's really going to be one of the competitive uh, kind of differentiating factors is the amount of crypto assets that you have Absolutely. for trading. Uh, and as well as if they can maybe... I know you do a lot with the fiat, but are they able to trade cryptocurrencies currency to currency yet? Or do you think you're going to have BTC pairs in the future or how is that going to yeah. lay out? Yeah. So, so the quick answer is yes. Okay. Um, the, the longer answer is, and the, the truth is there are so many things we want to do and uh, we've grown really fast. Uh, we've brought on a great team. We just got to deploy these things in, in the right timeline. Uh, uh, we uh, will absolutely support coin-to-coin -coin pairing. 
Uh, part of that is as we grow into supporting crypto inbound and outbound transfers and support of, of wallet inbound and outbound transfers. They won't necessarily go together, but that's an important ingredient for us. Um, and uh, we've prioritized more on the back end. What we found earlier in, in our earliest customers and what people wanted were uh, a more accessible fiat gateway, a way to access coins with fiat. But of course, as we started to do that and deliver that promise, then everyone's seeking the, the, the crypto pairing. Um, so, so we're working on it. We think it's really important. It's something personally as a feature I, I really want as well. Uh, some work on the back end to get done before, before we deliver that front end, but I think you'll see it later this year. Perfect. And, and I know that Voyager for the institutional side is really striving to be kind of a custodian for crypto assets, but recently you guys did just create a partnership with the Ethos Universal Wallet. Uh, that I think they have something like maybe 100 cryptos on there currently, which I think that allows the retail investor to then hold their private keys and really still be the owners of their cryptocurrency. Uh, is, am I correct in assuming that there? Yeah, absolutely. So so you mentioned a couple things there that I think are, are worth diving into for a minute. Um, our institutional business, um, we like to say, and actually it's, it's funny, the guys at Ethos refer to this the same way because they have an institutional business and a kind of a retail business in their wallet. And that's part of what helped form a great, a great marriage and family with them in a way. Um, but uh, our institutional business really is the infrastructure behind our retail product. Our retail product in a way is, is a customer, is a product that sits on top of that institutional infrastructure. Um, so we always knew we would be in the institutional business. I don't know if we knew it as fast as we were building. But as we started building the retail product and mentioning what it was and that we were bringing best execution in the market, we started to get a lot of demand from folks who uh, maybe other broker dealers or other institutions that wanted to offer crypto to their clientele. So really businesses that have a, have a, a consumer client base that maybe are in the equity space or offer something different, but they want to offer crypto. But frankly, they don't want to do all the work we've been doing for the past year and a half. Uh, everything from how do I execute order, orders and offer liquidity to my customer because I we guarantee it for them on the equity side. Um, you know these institutions are not going to get in without without some of those table stakes being there. And then second, wow, this crypto and custody and it's a digital asset. What do I even do there? How do I do that? It seems really risky, right? How, just so our first goals with institution was just helping them get access and offer uh, really a, a service in a way, a lot of hand-holding um, to, to get them in the game. So um, we bring that execution technology through a series of APIs so they can execute on Voyager from their platforms. And then we have, we call it a suite of custodial partners. I'll talk a little bit about Ethos for a second. And, um, but we have uh, partnerships with BitGo, ItBit, and we'll continue to grow our custodial uh, network so that we don't ever want where an institution wants to custody an asset to be a blocker for our trading business. So we've built in a great sense with all these different custodians. So we can help our institutional partners uh, safe keep assets with a custodian or uh, uh, if they want to use a, uh, a wallet such as Ethos or really whatever they're, cost whatever they're comfortable with. Um, so we offer kind of a wide variety of the options of custody. Um, would you like me to talk a little bit about, uh, about Ethos there uh, as well? Yeah, well yeah, dive into ethos as well. And like you were saying there, I really, in my perspective, I think institutional players are looking for uh, kind of the handholding for other people to have the kind of liability for custodial options that are a little more safekeeping. But then I like that you guys did the ethos partnership because a lot of retail investors in this space, you know, you always hear if it's not, not your keys, not your coins. And a lot of retail investors really like to have the safety of being their own bank and holding their private keys, which I think your partnership with ethos hopefully allows. Correct. Correct. Uh, we we recent uh, we re recently uh, Ethos is now officially a Voyager company. We've 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 uh, recently uh, folded the two. Um, they'll exist as separate brands and products for a little while. Obviously, we have a lot of work to do. But we've actually you know been working with the Ethos team in a more of a partnership form for quite a few months. Um, so uh, you know. Custody of digital assets and being this business is very, it's, it's challenging. You want to offer a lot of flexibility um, and offer a lot of safety. I mean, this exists in the traditional finance uh, world as well. Um, uh, not your keys, not your coins is certainly a great principle, and, 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 and I support that. But at times, uh, if you're with a trusted party and, you're, and, and they're able to offer some level of hosted, uh, hosted custody like we currently do in the Voyager app, um, we may be able to do some better execution for you and some more efficient things with those coins by, by, by having the keys ourselves, right? By, by certainly guaranteeing that you own them, enabling you to, 
you know, sell them out to dollars or any other client you know, at, at any time you, uh, you want. That being said, uh, we look at custody as a spectrum. Um, some folks just don't want to deal with keys and they want to trust a third party, whether that be Voyager or an institution working with a third party, uh, uh, another third party custodian, um, or ethos. So our, our, uh, Ethos has a really awesome universal wallet. It's really a, a hot wallet would be the best way to describe it, where you have uh, the keys to your coins. And uh, we're working on two things. One, enabling folks who trade on the Voyager platform to be able to transfer those to a hot wallet while still kind of easily keeping them in the ecosystem so that they're more easily tradable, um, uh, a little closer to their trading account, but while still having those, those keys and offering you the benefits of a hot wallet. Um, on the flip side, uh, Ethos has uh, has uh, you know well over a hundred thousand users of the Ethos Universal Hot Wallet, and they would like to trade from there. They get to use things like Shapeshift, for an example, which is a great exchange tool. Um, but in terms of really powerful trading technology, getting you better price, we're going to integrate Voyager execution almost just like we would with any institutional client, as as I discovered. So you see how this is kind of an infrastructure business, uh, a lot of APIs really at the end of the day. Um, but we'll be able to deliver that trade execution directly into the Ethos Universal Wallet as well. And that community has been uh, really excited about that. That is awesome. Now, how do you feel, why do you feel users of Robinhood, Circle, Cash App should really make the switch to Voyager? We've already covered that, but I think I'll kind of sum this up a little bit. You guys also are implementing a little bit of news, research, and charting tools within the platform. And I think also you guys are doing some kind of like $25 Bitcoin credit right now for signing up to try to at least spur the interest over there because I, I'm sure you believe if you just get more users over there and they play around with it, that they're going to start to increase their trading percentages actually on the Voyager application. That's exactly right. If you go to invest, you know, we just ask that people come to our website to sign up on our list. And then if they do that and uh, they open a Voyager account currently, uh, we're, we're not live in every state, rolling out to more states. Um, they get a $25, uh, uh, Bitcoin credit, that's theirs. It's a tradable position, in fact, and they can earn money on that. Um, so that's available to, uh, to anyone in the US right, right now. Uh, you know, I'll talk a little bit about how we're, how we're different than some of our competitors. Uh, with that, I'll say, we talk a lot about our company as uh, the, the, our number one goal being increasing crypto adoption. Uh, so if someone's, uh, we're, we're really focused on getting new people into this uh, in, into this world of digital assets. We think that's the next big growth spurt as we've been in a little bit of a, it's been a long winter. Um, uh, so if uh, interested folks go out there, especially someone who's, uh, you know, never accessed Bitcoin or crypto and they find that through uh, any one of our competitors, uh, we think that helps the overall community and everyone's goals at the end of the day, you know, so I will say that. Uh, at the same rate as they learn a little bit more about crypto, we're pretty sure they're going to find our way to us and that we do some stuff differently. So, um, you know, depending on which competitor you want to identify, uh, we, we do a couple different things. Um, you mentioned, you know, the variety of coins that we offer and that came out the gate with, I think we'll always be really competitive and aggressive on that, particularly around fiat support. Um, our commission free offering is something we, we plan to continue to honor for a very, very long time and be a part of our business. Um, and, you know, that sort of value exchange and uh, what we do sort of on the back end to help deliver that on the front end to our customers is, uh, is, something, is something we're going to invest a lot in. Um, so, so that concept of not only, not only giving you commission-free pricing, but helping you get that better pricing in your order execution. And there's been a lot of folks just even in our beta that, you know, did some side-by-side -side comparisons of Voyager to some competitors. And it's, you know, really fun to see that, that, that people are excited about that, even in our earliest days. And then, you know, lastly, you touched on this. Um, it's the concept of being a broker. You know, a broker sounds like the old days of someone picking up the phone, taking your order and going to negotiate. And we really look at it as an agent, a service agent. Um, you know, in, in, in traditional equities, uh, you know, a broker has this concept of disclosures and information and making you feel informed. And to the degree that we can do that as company, that we can do that in product, in our software, we want to be able to do. And that shines through in uh, integrating news right, right into the app, being able to filter that by coins. Um, through our institutional business and then some other parties, um, uh, we, we're integrating research into the app. It's not something that's in there yet, but something that we, we care a lot about. I think you'll see some pretty cool things on that front from 
uh, sort of regular research to some more tools or potentially how to, how to model your portfolio. Um, so just assisting the crypto trader as well as educating them is something that'll, that'll continue to be important for us and I think helps us stay competitive and in addition to some of the other things I mentioned. Yeah, overall, I'm quite impressed with Voyager so far. I did just download it today. I am in Missouri. A lot of you know that. So I do have it in my state. So I'll definitely be giving some more feedback on some of our live shows as I execute some trades, see how easy it is to really get fiat from my bank account over there. And hopefully by what you're saying, it's all going to be positive reviews uh, moving forward and we can get some more users over there. Also, guys, you know how we love to take advantage of passive income opportunities within cryptocurrency ecosystem. So a $25 Bitcoin credit. He said you could just sell for cash if you want, but a lot of us believe in the future of Bitcoin, so you probably want to trade and hodl that one uh, to a higher level there as well. Um, really, you know, we got a great scope of Voyager and what you guys are really trying to create. So I probably already know the answer to one of these last questions I have for you, but what is really your overall opinion or the Voyager team opinion on the future of <clears throat> cryptocurrency, even throughout this bear market, even though I believe the bottom is in and the bear market is over? You know, what do you see moving forward for crypt the crypto industry and what really takes us to the next bull run or the next uh, rally of more users coming into the space. Yeah, uh, I, absolutely. Um, I wish I had the magic answer. I don't know if any, if, if any of us do, uh, but uh, you know, I, I will say this. Um, I think, you know, there's this old kind of sort of cliche quote. I think it's Wayne Gretzky of skating to where the puck is going. And that's something we've, we've had in mind for, for a very uh, uh, long time in terms of, we believe that crypto assets, broadly speaking, digital assets in general, um, are the future. That it's not just about new projects or businesses or technologies coming through to these assets, that they represent the, the future form of finance. So that's ultimately why we're bullish. What, what we don't know is exactly when, right? That's, uh, so as a company, it's our responsibility uh, to make the right investments, to stay capitalized, to deliver shareholder value in the meanwhile, to prioritize the right features along the way. Um, you know, the, the trading business, there's still a lot of, there's still great trading volume around there and volatility. So for a trading business, um, it's still, you know, decent market conditions for us, in fact. But ultimately, that upswing back again, where we're, we're, we all see it going, obviously, this is not investment advice by any means. Um, but, uh, uh, we're, we're ultimately bullish because we saw the potential of the market, um, which in a very similar way that we've seen in other emerging technology markets. Um, and we think there is a, a, a much larger pie, a much larger representation of what crypto really means. Yeah. Yeah, guys, this is obviously never financial advice and this is always a speculative market. Hence why we saw the blow off top in 2017. Uh, we kind of came back to more reasonable valuations if that's what you want to call it uh, and now is really when i believe the smart money or the institutions is really building that infrastructure to start moving into this ecosystem to kind of create the the next wave of utilization and investment speculation in bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies as well as blockchain technology do you have any last comments pertaining to the voyager platform uh kind of like your uh your sales pitch to get some new users over there from this video uh sure um uh, a, please check out investvoyager.com. We work really hard to provide a lot of information about what we do, even kind of what we're planning. We're always open to feedback. Never, uh, we have a pretty active Telegram channel if, if, if you search for us and pretty active on Twitter. We take any and all feedback. Uh, uh, we think we grow by, by that feedback. Uh, we encourage you to read the news. It's been a, a pretty crazy and exciting uh, about four weeks for us between uh, shipping our app publicly, which we encourage everyone to download, even if we're not live trading in your state. Uh, you can still download our app, sign up, read the news, check out market prices. It's still a great utility for you, and that's the best way of, of being ready for when we're live and, and, and trading in that state. Uh, and then lastly, we're really proud that we, we uh, listed as a public company um, that holds us to an even higher standard. Uh, helps us be a trusted company. We trade on the Toronto Best Venture Exchange as VYGR or VYGR.V. Uh, feel free to check us out. Um, uh, and uh, we, we really, like I said, appreciate the support, appreciate the feedback. And, uh, you know, uh, once again, it's uh, investvoyager.com. I see it there on, on your whiteboard. Got it back there for you. 
<laughs> yeah, we'll throw all the links in the description below. I'll try to tag some of your social media channels as well. And guys, let us know in the comments section below, what do you think of Voyager? Are you going to check it out? Or are you going to stay on Binance or one of these other exchanges? And maybe this can help get rid of some of those tabs that we all know we have. I have about 20 of them on my computer screen right now. Maybe in the future, I'll only be one purple uh, tab up there with the there Voyager you logo. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Hit that like, share, and subscribe button, and we'll see you at the next live show. Thanks, Zach.